Hello and welcome back to my channel Conquiz 16 Concept Booster on Quantum Part 4. Today's episode consists of questions of true false type. Today's part 1. So let us go to the set of questions. The first question F B C G is equal to C F B G. Of course, B is linear. Uh, here, uh, I must mention that uh, this is the bracket notation used in this problem and in the coming all the problems uh, which we have discussed in our earlier session on quiz 15. But let us better, let us uh, have a quick review of the bracket notation. So, uh, thing uh, goes like that. Suppose you have a function g, wave function and uh, it is actually we can consider as a vector in a vector space. So, the function as a vector it turns out to be a ket vector, we call it g ket or ket g. Uh, so, this is the representation of our function g in ket notation. Similarly, if you think of a function f and if you take the uh, complex conjugate of that f and then in bracket notation it is actually the bra. So, f. So, that means if something is in the bra position when it comes out, uh, then it is a complex conjugate of the function. So, it would be even more clear if I take together bra and ket. So, f g, what does it mean? Actually, it represents an integral where f is f star. Here, this bra f comes as f star. But g is in ket, so g comes as such and g tau. So, this is the significance or representation of bracket fg. Similarly, if you think of some uh, involving some operator fbg, then it is equivalent to an integral f, naturally f comes as complex conjugate, then the operator b operating on g and then d tau. So, this is the uh, significance. Now, if you come back to the question that f b c g, now c is in uh, the ket position. So, uh, when uh, in terms of integral, you can think of it comes out as c not as c star because it is in ket position. So, c comes out. So, remaining f b and g. So, f b g. Sometimes we ignore this vertical line. So, f b g. C comes out. Uh, uh, this is because B is linear, because you li know the linear uh, operator B, it operates when on C f C is a constant, it gives you C B f. C B f. So, uh, this uh, B on C g, it is C B g, but since C is in k, so C comes out as C not C star. So, the statement is uh, true. So, this statement is true. Okay. Uh, so, let me go uh, back by erasing first the lines and taking the pen again. Well, what is the next question? C f b g equal to C f b g whether this statement is right or wrong. Okay. Uh, let me take the pen first. Okay. Now, uh, clearly C is now in the bra position. So, if it comes out, it would come as C star, right. So, C star should come out, not C. And then F B g. But the answer given is not c star, but c. So, uh, the statement is false. Let us see. Yeah, the statement is false. It should be c star. Okay. Fermation f b g and b f g. Actually, it comes straight forward from the definition because you know for Hermitian operator b, the definition looks like uh, f star b g d tau 
if it is equal to uh, g d star f star d tau. So, uh, by definition this is a uh, uh, Hermitian operator. Now, f b g this is nothing but the left hand side of this given problem f b g and, and the right hand side is b f with star. So, it is in the bra position b f and then comes g. Okay. So, you can uh, it is a thumb rule that in such an expression if b is Hermitian you just bring b towards your left. So, that would give you b f g if b is Hermitian. So, that is the usual thumb rule. And uh, a different form of uh, Hermitian operator is actually uh, this one. It is called turnover rule. You see, f b g, f b g, it turns a uh, uh, turnover rule of uh, that g comes here from right to left and f from left to right and uh, overall star comes here. Okay. So, that you can easily show that the left hand side is f b g, that means this integral or this integral. So, if you easily see that from the right hand side g b star f star uh, g b star f star. So, if you take uh, a additional complex conjugation, so it becomes g star and b f, but you have taken additional conjugation to this right hand side. So, you have to take to neutralize this additional uh, conjugation like this. Okay. So, these two are equivalent now. Now, g star b f you can write is g b f, but the star is here. So, star is here. So, this is nothing but the right hand side this one. Okay. g b f star. So, uh, both are uh, equally uh, applicable. Uh, this rule, thumb rule is here that uh, turn over that means you bring g right to left f from left to right and give us a, a additional star or you can uh, bring b from here b from here and it gives you bfg bfg that also is equally applicable okay well uh, with this much of uh, review we let us go for the uh, today's new problem that a and b are hermitian then a plus b hermitian so by definition we demand that this kind of uh, demand we are making that if a plus b g and we demand that a plus b is Hermitian. So, if it is Hermitian by definition by thumb rule it comes here. So, a plus b uh, f and then g. So, we have to prove that is uh, is really true. So, let us start from the left hand side. So, f a plus b g by some rule a plus g. So, we can split this left hand side as f a g plus f b g right f a plus b g. Now, a is Hermitian. So, by a comes here, b comes here. So, it becomes a f g plus b f g ok. Now, a f and b f both are in bra position. So, you can take together taking a common a plus b f g. So, this is exactly what we demanded for a plus b to be Hermitian. So, here we have proved that if a and b are Hermitian then a plus b is also Hermitian. So, the statement is supposed to be uh, true. Uh, true. So, this is true. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let me erase uh, this beer with me. Let me erase uh, the link and take the pen. Okay. D2 dx2 is Hermitian. So, uh, actually, that you have to uh, do it on your own. Uh, only hints is that what you want to show that f. Uh, a star um, a f a g a is the operator uh, f star you just do that f star a 
g d tau and you have to show that this is uh, equal to g a star f star d tau. So, this integral uh, equality holds true uh, for d2 dx2 submission that is why it is Hermitian. So, that is uh, you can take it as a task ok. So, it is true. For a being Hermitian C A, C is a constant, uh, is Hermitian, provided C is real, but C A is not Hermitian if C is not real. So, that uh, question is true or false that we have to check, ok. So, let us start with uh, F C A G, F some C A is there, some G, ok. Now, we demand that if C A is to be Hermitian, then we demand that the whole thing uh, it would come here. So, it should be like C A F F G fine. Now, that is equal to because C is in bra position and it is a constant. So, C comes out as C star right. So, C star a f g ok. That is we demand, uh, but here c is not in bra rather in the k position. So, this actually gives you c f a g or uh, you can say that c a is our mission about then C A F G. So, these two are same if only C is equal to C star. That means, C is real. Otherwise, it is not possible. So, A is Hermitian, then C A is Hermitian provided C is real. Okay. So, that is the uh, question. Now, uh, let us uh, it is go for the next question. Next question is uh, d2 dx2. So, this is your a compared to the earlier problem. d2 dx2 is Hermitian, then uh, Tx kinetic energy of water minus h bar square by 2m d2 dx2 is also Hermitian. So, obviously, this is your C and this is A. So, if A is Hermitian, then C A is Hermitian. If C A is real, C is real, and here C is minus h bar square by 2m. So, it is real. So, Tx operator is also Hermitian. Okay. So, true because uh, A minus h bar square by 2m is real d2 dx2 is Hermitian, then i d2 dx2 is also Hermitian. Of course, uh, this is going to be false statement because uh, if this is your a and this is your c, this i is c and this is your c a overall. So, c is clearly i which is not real. So, i d2 dx2 is not Hermitian. So, it is a false statement. Similarly, uh, if we compare this one, p x is h bar by i d d x is Hermitian. So, this whole thing is your a and d d x is also Hermitian. So, from a to c a, so c a. Now, uh, what can be your uh, c i by h cross? Uh, so, if you multiply this a by i by h cross, then only we get this i i cancel out h cross cancel out so that gives you ddx so this is your c actually c a c now this c is clearly i by h bar that is not real so the given uh, ddx is not hermitian though h bar by i ddx is hermitian clear uh, another one again px is given h bar by i ddx is hermitian uh, then i d d x is also Hermitian. So, here if this is your a 
then c is going to be uh, c is going to be i square by h bar you, you check it then c a that gives you i square by h bar into i ddx uh, uh, h bar sorry h bar by i ddx isn't it so i and i square cancel out that keeps you h bar h bar cancel out so i ddx i ddx so c is i square by h bar and which is nothing but minus 1 by h bar and which is of course real quantity so the given i ddx operator is also hermitian if px is hermitian i think you have got my point you can try it again on your own well this is a separate kind of problem uh, square root and ddx cannot represent a physical uh, quantity why it's true uh, if we just follow the postulate too then uh, we know that uh, in quantum mechanics every operator uh, which corresponds to a physical quantity every operator has to be uh, linear and hermitian okay linear and hermitian but here the first one taking the square root you know that this is not a linear operator because f plus g is not equal to f plus g neither neither uh, okay c f is equal to c root f so uh, even the first one is enough uh, a c f well uh, so the first one this is not linear and the earlier problem we have seen that ddx is not a hermitian operator so ddx cannot represent a physical quantity and why this is so okay take it as a task we have discussed in the earlier video well uh, the next question if a and b are hermitian then the product a b is hermitian so that you can easily show that uh, if a b if a b the product g so we demand that uh, a b is hermitian that means the whole thing you can bring to left so you demand that a b f g it should be equal to this right we demand that if a b is hermitian and now you apply the definition uh, one by one a first bring a since a is hermitian so always you can write a f b g now b is hermitian so you can bring b so that is equal to b a f So, uh, it is true, the statement is true that if A and B are Hermitian, then the product AB is also Hermitian. Uh, unless there is a condition A and B commute, that actually I have discussed in the last video uh, because, uh, well, we, we, we have seen that AB and here it comes BA. So, if these two are to be same, then a b is equal to b a so that you missed the point uh, so uh, the question is in general uh, false then uh, but provided that a and b commute then of course the product a b is addition so in general it's a false statement uh, unless a and b commute okay Two linearly independent eigenfunctions of the same Hermitian operator are always orthogonal to each other. There is a very famous theorem uh, regarding this degeneracy and orthogonality. Of course, the operator has to be linear. And that and the degenerate eigenstates, linear combination of the degenerate eigenstate of a linear operator is also an uh, eigenfunction of the same operator. Uh, but uh, the question is that. Uh, if uh, 
no sorry i, I was talking about a bit different uh, aspect actually of the same question uh, here the problem is that uh, the property of a hermitian operator uh, that we know that uh, the eigen functions of a hermitian operator are orthogonal if uh, only uh, if uh, the eigen functions are non degenerate right non degenerate but uh, even if the eigen functions are degenerate then we can make them orthogonal uh, by some extra trick uh, but in general uh, it's false because they have to be non degenerate okay well a linear operator b is anti hermitian if f b g is minus g b f so this is just a matter of definition uh, we have seen that if you uh, if you ignore the minus sign then actually this is the definition of hermitian so if you just put an extra minus then it is a definition of anti hermitian okay so this is the definition so it's true and b is anti hermitian then f b g well by uh, bringing b here we got uh, this one excluding the minus sign to be the definition another definition uh, of an uh, hermitian then if you put the minus sign extra then it again gives the and the hermitian expression okay so this is a matter of definition ddx is anti hermitian so if you know the definition then you can check uh, as we have checked ddx is not hermitian but is it anti hermitian so you can check using that definition but it's true if a and b are hermitian then their commutator is anti hermitian and their anti commutator is hermitian okay so by this time you know uh, anti hermitian definition but what is anti commutator the ab minus ba this is the commutator then ab plus ba is the anti commutator so your task is to uh, uh, so that that you can now uh, take it as a task that uh, commutator is anti hermitian uh, then uh, okay so so you demand that ab minus ba the commutator is anti hermitian so you demand what do you demand as i told you the whole thing you bring to your left with a minus sign so minus uh, it comes as ab minus ba F G. So you just split that. So you can split uh, uh, here. You start from left side. So you can split A A B uh, G minus uh, A B A G. Okay. Now A B. So first A will come, then B will come. So that would give you B A f g minus uh, here b will come then a will come so a b so it gives you a b f g okay so that would give you uh, b a minus a b so uh, b a minus f f and g so if you take a minus out of here so it gives you a b minus b a f g so exactly what you demand for a b minus b a to be anti hermitian that you get it right so okay the treatment is true uh, for first part and their anti commutator is hermitian so this is i am uh, leaving it for you anti commutator means you have to put a plus here right and a plus would be here so a plus would be here so you have to check it by same strategy so i think you can get it well uh,
uh, just a second. Yeah. Uh, pin. The quantities uh, FPG and FG are numbers, not functions. So, in the very uh, first slide, we have seen that uh, this represents actually an integral. Uh, so, if you uh, evaluate the integral over a limit, you will get a number, right? So, similarly, FG is also a number and not a function. So, the statement is true. If the operator B corresponds to a physical property of a quantum uh, mechanical system, quantum mechanical system, the state function psi must be an eigenfunction of B. Uh, this is, uh, of course, false statement uh, because uh, simultaneous eigenstate you can get, but uh, then uh, if uh, the operators H and B have to commute with each other, that we know. So, not necessarily it is true. But if they commute, then it is true. Well, uh, it has a deep significance as you know that uh, H and B, suppose position and momentum, if you take uh, two operators uh, A and B, and then uh, if they do not commute, that X, B, X actually do not commute, that leads to some uncertainty relation, and that we have discussed in depth in the earlier discussion. Well, let us uh, see another significance which is no less deeper precision of l vector angular momentum vector l so l uh, as a vector it has c components as you know lx ly and lz and we can show that they do not commute with each other so if uh, they do not commute then what it gives that any two of them cannot be specified simultaneously any two of them lx ly or lz uh, and only one of them say lz it can be specified, but not the other two. Okay. So, uh, as a result, L can never have a specific direction in space, or in other words, L can never be aligned with a given axis, say Z axis, right? Uh, rather, it traces out a cone and the vector quantum uh, uh, angular momentum vector L. Uh, it occurs a precision motion, it L precises about Z axis we call, uh, it is kind of thing that uh, this L vector, uh, it makes a cone. So, uh, the angle with Z axis, it, it can be specified, but on the x y plane, uh, making the same angle theta, where, where the phi value, that is uh, you cannot specify, because uh, they are connected to L x and L y, projection on x and y axis but they are not uh, can be simultaneously specified right so it moves around and it gives a cone like thing okay it moves around so this is the precision motion uh, precisional motion of l okay uh, another significance no less deeper and that is called space quantization so let us see uh, let us ask the question is there any other operator that commutes with lz okay the answer is yes, L square, square of angular momentum operator, it commutes with Lz. So, we can simultaneously measure both of them, right. And we can show that uh, L square has the eigenvalue uh, L into L plus 1 h bar square, where L is the quantum number. Uh, so, the length of the vector, so if this is the L square, then length of the vector is square root, right. So, L into L plus 1 square root into h bar. Uh, and LZ simultaneously you can specify uh, because they do commute. So, in that case, we can again show that LZ has the uh, eigenvalue m h cross, m is another quantum number, but that depends on L in this way. And we can show that m varies from uh, minus L to plus L, including 0, that is 12 plus 1 number of m values that you can get. So, what we can conclude that, for example, L is 1. Then the length of the vector is 1 into 1 plus 1 square root, uh, that means root over 2 h bar, that is the length of the vector. But Lz, it has minus 1, 0 plus 1 because L is 1, so minus L, 0 plus L, 0 minus plus h bar, uh, m h bar, so m uh, are like this. So that means Lz has three values, three different values for a given. Mm, length angular momentum or given quantum number L. So, this is uh, uh, the graphical presentation that if you take 
a particular length of vector this much ok. Then uh, in space it can have uh, not any arbitrary direction or in other words mathematically it can have the angle this theta angle with the z axis not an arbitrary theta value is allowed only three values are allowed because this Lz is the a component z component and it has a definite three values 0, h bar and minus h bar. So, it can have only three directions right. Uh, so, we call it space quantization. Well, uh, slightly uh, differently suppose in a class there are three omits name of students. So, uh, three ohms uh, they are degenerate by name. If you call ohmi then three of them will raise their hands ok. Now, two of them use spectacles and one does not ok. So, you can say uh, the threefold degenerate which was degenerate by name is now slightly lifted. Now, you get a twofold degenerate and one fold non degenerate or one fold. Uh, because one is without spectacle and two of them are with spectacles. So, again two of them with spectacle. So, how you can differentiate? One spec omit, uh, one omit is actually taller, rather he is the tallest one. So, spec omit is tallest one. Now, you can say that omit without spec, omit spec tall and omit spec medium are uniquely leveled. Okay. So, DNS is now completely lifted. So, what uh, is the relevance to this discussion? Uh, it is lifting a degeneracy. We know that Hamiltonian square of angular momentum and the z component h, l square and l z they commute with each other. Okay. Uh, say with example, principal quantum number n equal to 2. So, we know that l is 0 and 1, 0 for s orbital, 2 s orbital and 1 is 2 p orbital. 3 to pure vectors. Okay. Now, energy it is a function of n only. So, all these 4 orbitals s and 3 p orbitals are energetically same because they have the same n value 2, right. And L e is not a function of l and n. So, energetically 2 s and 3 p that means all 4 are degenerate, but l the length of angular momentum l it is 0 and root over 2 as we have seen in the earlier case root over 2 h bar. For uh, s orbital it is 0 because l itself is 0. So, l into l plus 1 is 0 and for l equal to 1 that is p orbital it is root over 2 h, uh, h bar ok. So, DNS is lifted to some extent with respect to the l square operator. S orbital is now differently uh, and the, uh, from, different from the p orbitals. But again, the three p orbitals are still degenerate with respect to L square. So, we need another, we need another operator uh, with which uh, they commute H and L square both uh, because then only you can think of simultaneous eigenstate and here it is L z which commutes with L square and L z. And L is a function of m only, and m has different values for all three p orbitals 0, plus 1, minus 1. So, the L z values are 0, plus h plus minus h plus. So, now you can say uh, all the degeneracy uh, have, have been lifted, degeneracy of three p orbitals. So, uh, uh, each orbital or omit in the class is now uniquely characterized by n, l, m, and that is very much needed now, uh, you know that uh, each orbital if you cannot uh, unambiguously and uniquely characterize or label uh, then you cannot use this properly ok. So, I think you have got the point listen it again if needed thank you very much uh, our next video is uh, going to be session 17 coming soon and that will be quantum part 5 true false part 2 on quantum. So, please keep on watching do subscribe and encourage your friends to subscribe. Thanks.